Okay, and now it's time. That was the sound of the swamp bubbling at us. Now it's time to properly begin the game, or it's almost time. Uh, just before I begin, let me address a couple of things which were mentioned in the comments uh, in the previous video by some of my viewers and commenters. And thank you folks, as always, for commenting and pointing out stuff and things. Uh, I guess the first thing, it's not really a big deal, but I mentioned Pee Wee's Playhouse, that uh, old children's TV show. Um, I think I might have given the false impression that a certain accident, well, it wasn't an accident, it was, I guess, I guess that sort of thing doesn't happen by accident, but a, a certain unfortunate uh, scandal involving the star of Pee Wee's Playhouse led to the show's cancellation. I think I might have given that impression in the previous video. Actually, it's not the case. The show uh, was canceled before the uh, much publicized incident in a movie theater involving the star of the show. Uh, not a big thing, but somebody pointed out that I might have given that impression, so I wanted to correct that. Oh, and this is Trixie the Accommodating Sheep, whom everybody in town knows. She used to belong to a bachelor farmer, but he died of some strange disease. Hmm. Bad boy. <laughs> Translation, I'm terribly sorry, sir, but I can't accommodate you right now. Wasn't there some old rap song which was something like, Bad, bad boy. I don't think that was meant to. S I don't think the song was meant to sound like a sheep, but it sort of achieves that effect, doesn't it? Bad, bad boy. All right. So anyway, yeah, Pee Wee's Playhouse went off the air before that whole thing in the movie theater. Um, and if I gave any contrary impressions to that, I wanted to just uh, amend that. Um, a few people mentioned uh, that this whole thing in the sheriff's office with uh, with the reading material relating to famous authors like Chaucer and Balzac. Um, I guess that's a reference to some uh, some old theatrical production. I forget what it's called actually now, but if you look in the previous video, you'll probably see some comments explaining what it's from. I think it is notable, and I just want to point out before I continue, um, Josh Mandel, who co-wrote this game along with Al Lowe, used to be in the theater business before he joined Sierra and started making adventure games and stuff for Sierra. He was actually a uh, a theater actor, and that, that was his uh, job for, I think, a fairly long time. I'm not sure how long. I don't know his detailed autobiography, but he was... I remember uh, watching an interview with him, and he said that he was doing that for a long time before he joined Sierra. So uh, Josh Mandel sort of has a, uh, a theatrical background, and he put references to that into this game, which I think is very interesting. What we often see with video games is that they end up sort of referencing themselves. So you have a lot of games like, um, I don't know, one that comes to mind because I saw it recently is Abobo's Big Adventure, which is, you know, that game which is basically everything in the game is like a reference to some classic NES game. Along similar lines is I Want to Be the Guy, which is basically pretty much every section of that game is some kind of takeoff or parody of some classic NES game or other sort of arcade game. Uh, but we really don't have a lot of games which, um, which reference theater, like classic... Uh, you know, live theater productions. And this game has quite a few of those. It has a lot of references, because Josh Mandel is, in essence, he's a, a theater geek, or he was, at least. That's his background. And so it's very interesting and very unusual, I think, for us to have a game like this, which contains so many references to classical theatrical productions. So see how many you can spot as we continue playing this game. And... Uh, I should point out, by the way, because Josh Mandel uh, was an actor, uh, most of you probably know, but if you don't, Josh Mandel was also the voice of King Graham, as first revealed, I guess, in the CD-ROM version of King's Quest V, and he later served as the voice of King Graham for subsequent King's Quest games and spin-offs as well. Um, so yeah, he was a professional actor, and I think it kind of comes through in his acting. I think, obviously, he did a great job voicing King Graham. And yeah, he wasn't just a computer game programmer, unlike most of the other people who voiced King's Quest V, which were mostly just random people taken from the Sierra offices. Well, Josh was too. Josh was, an, a, was he was a Sierra employee, but he actually was, he had a background as an actor. So I thought that was interesting. Anyway, one other thing. I had a request, not sure why, to give the... As I recall, the can, this uh, tin can, to uh, Salvador O'Hanahan, the barber. Uh, in my opinion, his response isn't all that hilariously funny, but let's see what he says. 
You no need my charity, Freddy. You doing hockey. Maybe it's the hockey that's funny. Are we hockey? Are we hockey? I think we're hockey. Yeah, I think everything is hockey now. Uh, actually, Salvatore gives a lot of funny responses. Let's see, what does he say? I seem to recall he... I think I still remember from 20 years ago his response to the ladder. Yeah. What? You want to climb up of me? Want to see the top of my head? What's a big deal? I always thought that was rather amusing. Let's see what else he says, since Salvatore is a gold mine of uh, funny lines. This and the mustache wax. I didn't care what kind of wax it is either. Church key? Shouldn't that key not to belong to me? Same thing. <clears throat> Elixir? Ah, no thank you, lad. I had a wee bit of that stuff last night, and a whole oh boy, I'm a paying today. Ice pick. Say, that thing, she's a sharper than most of my dental instruments. You want to trade for old rusty drill? Nah, I don't think so. Thanks for the offer, though. What, you want to bag of hair clippings? Sorry, Atta would be violating the, the right to privacy of me customers. I understand. Of course, Freddy understands. He's a professional pharmacist. He has customers as well. Not the while I'm a working, Freddy. I wouldn't want to be operating heavy machinery like this chair while under the influence now, would I? I think those scissors might be a greater threat than operating the chair while drunk. Uh, but the glass was empty anyway. Alright, I think that takes care of all the things that I wanted to address. So, let's try to go into the pharmacy. And, yeah, the pharmacy door is locked, but we can uh, unlock it with the key. Pay attention to what happens to our score, by the way. Currently, so you can see the game has a maximum score of 999 points. And I think there are actually a couple of tricks that you can use to get it slightly higher than that. I think the maximum that I got is 1001, if I remember right, but it's supposed to be 999. Right now we have 8 points based on some things that we've picked up. If I go ahead and unlock the pharmacy door... Score! You unlock the door! Ta-da! You're halfway through the game! Unlocking the pharmacy door gives you 500 points. Uh, which is actually more than half of the total points, because 500 is half of 1,000. So it's just ever so slightly more than one half of 999. But that's basically a, a joke. It's basically... Uh, you can consider that a joke. So basically, since you get 500 points for opening the pharmacy door... You can say, in effect, that the maximum score to this game is 500, because if you subtract 500 from 999, you get 499, so basically around 500 points, roughly, is what is the... That, that should basically be worth one point. They just give you 500 points as a joke. So, anyway, let's go inside the pharmacy. And here's our first view inside our workplace, where soon we're going to have to do some actual work. But let's see what's going around. Uh, there's a big hand here that says prescriptions on it. The sign clearly lets the town folk know, townsfolk know that the prescription counter is in the back of the store. Someday, you hope, there will be some sort of glass tube mounted on the back wall, bent in the shape of the word prescription, and filled with a rare gas that will glow in a bright, colorful fashion. Wouldn't that be wonderful? That would make people actually want to buy drugs. Mm-hmm. It's your iced cr Iced? Did they used to say iced cream instead of ice cream? It's your iced cream stand. You thought it would attract customers. It mainly attracts cockroaches, especially now that the iced cream deliveries have stopped. This multi-instrument, piano roll-style juke machine is called a symphonium. Trouble is, the company that sold it to you went out of business after producing only one roll. And how many times can one person listen to Does your cha and tobacco lose its flavor on the bedpost overnight? Oh heck, I don't know. I could listen to that all day. Except that, well, actually I don't know what it is, but I'm assuming it must be catchy if they made it into a symphonium roll. This picture closely approximates the pharmacy where you work. A deluxe shelving unit featuring polished mahogany inlays, filigreed end caps, extra wide mid height shelf, and no skid recessed legs. Shelving units for Freddy Farkas Frontier Pharmacist provided by Crate and Barrel and Old Used Whiskey Keg and Termite Infested Rotting Old Wooden Leg. Uh, okay. I think this is the same. It's the back counter where you 
Uh, no, that's not the back counter. I was still clicking on this thing. That's the back counter there, where you, Freddy Farkas, Frontier Performance is extraordinary to dispense your wares. I guess I should point out, uh, it's pretty obvious already, but uh, part of the joke of this game, sort of the, the running gag of this game, is that uh, Freddy is a pharmacist. It's kind of a supposed to be a funny takeoff on old western stories because of course old western stories are traditionally about gunslingers and cowboys and the joke here is uh oh he's, he's a pharmacist what adventures could a pharmacist possibly have um so yeah one of several sort of subversions if you will of the wild west cliche although maybe not we might see uh we might see that uh, changed a bit later. But anyway, can I look at the... Oh, here we go. On top of our reduced table, Madame Gazonga is Parfume d'eau, Springtime for Scent, Aunt Lily's Toilet Essence Shampoo, pronounced sh shampoo, okay. French Woman's Brand Breath Detoxifier, Pinkham Edible deep, deep, Depilatory? Hollywoodland Ruminant Suppressant, Hollywood Stars Don't Chew Their Cuds, Why Should You? Uh... I don't think that most Hollywood stars have cuds in the first place. The new Epicheap Easy Shearer and Preparation G, though you don't always have that on hand. So this is, in my opinion, this is a little bit of a bad... Um, this is a good example of what not to do when making an adventure game. This is the classic pixel hunt. See that blue thing right there at the front of that table? It looks so inconspicuous that you'd think you would just blend into all the other random stuff that you can't do anything with here. Because it says, nope, that's not one of the pills, poultices, or preparations you'll need. But this blue tube right up here at the front of this counter is, in fact, something that we need. It's a tube of Preparation G, the Wells Fargo wagon driver's friend for over half a decade. This is a, uh, of course, a joke on Preparation H, which is a hemorrhoid medication. And this is also a, prep uh, a uh, hemorrhoid medication, except it's just called Preparation G. And the handy 25-ounce Krabby Elephant size. All right, here we go. Now we have Preparation G. A tube of Preparation G is the latest anti-hemorrhoidal unguent from the folks at Park Loomis. Fine tissue ointment since 1848. Of course, this is very useful. You can click this and all the other things. Uh, yes, hemorrhoid ointment with a kick. The door key never strains. No, it does not. <laughs> Doesn't leave you with that uncomfortable waxy feeling. <laughs> Yes, putting an ice pick into the uh, hemorrhoid cream might not be the best combination. Hopefully it doesn't invol involve some sort of new method of, <laughs> of applying the ointment. Yes, yes, I see why that might be a bit of an unpleasant idea. The ladder has been standing for years, so its hemorrhoids are already cleared up. Smithy doesn't want no bag, he's a man! He'll carry it out in the open where everyone can see it. Uh, this is actually a bit of a... I guess you wouldn't really call it a spoiler, but it's kind of a foreshadowing. The Preparation H is actually to be given to Smithy, even though we don't know it yet. On his gravestone someday, he'll write, He wore his roids with pride. We're going to save you from yourself by preventing you from poisoning Doc with pressure. I wasn't trying to poison him with the Preparation G. I was just wondering what would happen if you put it into the glass. What are you trying to do, cheat your customers? Squirting the Preparation G into a jumbo can so you can seal it up again and sell it at the... At the, at the, at the giant, that's a giant 128 ounce really uncomfortable sperm whale size. For shame, for shame. We'll use it on ourselves. You heave a sigh of relief. All right. All right, all right, that's enough of that for now. Obviously, as you can imagine, trying to give the hemorrhoid cream to various people around the town also elicits humorous responses. I'll probably do that later. This is the president's wife. She's the head of the Just Say No to Ether campaign. Uh, and this is a bottle filled with this century's most incredible medical breakthrough. The game does not tell you what that is, but uh, not yet, but if you try to interact with it, then the game informs you you won't be needing any leeches in this game. Another table, I want you to display your many available patent medicines and innovative treatments. Ah, this is Freddy's diploma from the University of Hicksville School of Ap Apothecary Sciences and other good guesses. The old alma mater. What memories? Good question. By the way, folks, uh, I'm still getting comments on my old Quest for Glory 2 video explaining how to pronounce apothecary. Uh, it's it's okay. You can stop now. I don't I don't need to know how to pronounce apothecary anymore. I know when I made that video, I still pronounced it apothecary because I was an idiot and didn't know how to speak English. 
or, well, I didn't know how to pronounce that word, but I think, uh, I think we can move on from this now. But thank you all for your contributions. Uh, let's see, what do we have up here? On top of this cabinet, you have a stunningly arranged display of old Snuffy's Limp Root Hair Oil Cream in the 8-ounce, 16-ounce, and giant 64-ounce Baby Huey Jar, as well as a few dusty boxes of Rustler's Stove Chocolates. Rustler's Stove, the standard of drugstore chocolates for over half a century. Don't think we need... Yeah, we don't need any hair oil cream or stove chocolates. That is St. Joseph, patron saint of chewable aspirin. If you pick it up, all the luck will run out the bottom. All right. You can look at this back here. Oh, yes, this is where we keep all the newest, most scientifically advanced medications safe from shoplifters. Wound tonic, yeah. Deep wound iodine salt balm. Ouch. A little goes a long way. Yes, it does. And... Ch Chaz? Is that short for something, since there's an apo uh, not apostrophe, a period on the end? Uh, Ber Burke Squire, PhD's effervescent enema uh, uh, Why would you want an... Oh, wait, I clicked on something different. Good grief. There's so many, so many things here. Alright, this is something else. Platinum eczema tonic. tonic. Montgomery's Digestive Granulated Plutonium. Uh, okay, plutonium does not sound like something you want to prescribe to customers. Dentist Choice Do-It-Yourself Silver Amalgam Fillings, hand drill included. That also does not sound like something you want to be selling your customers. And California Cowboy Aluminum Snuff, which is actually made in New York City. New York City! That is a fairly obscure joke, which I actually did get uh, when I was playing this game. So... When this game came out, uh, around 94 or something like that, there used to be commercials on TV for tomato paste, um, and the, in each of the commercials they would talk about how the tomato paste was made in San Antonio by folks who know what tomato paste should taste like, and then there would be some guy who had tomato paste that wasn't real authentic tomato paste, and then they would say, Hey, this stuff's made in New York City! And everybody would say, NEW YORK CITY! Because it's shocking that, you know, tomato paste should come from New York City because that... Uh, anyway. Uh, but going back to what I... Okay, so that's the top shelf there that I guess I was looking at. Uh, why would you want an effervescent enema? I don't think that's really quite what... Well, actually, maybe some people are into that thing. I don't know. I guess I, guess I shouldn't judge. Uh, here's Overstock... Athlete's foot solvent, ear hair wax, melt away compound, impure a slug chow. Oh, is that a reference to Space Quest 4? Investors guaranteed pumice acne treatment. Boy. Here, items here, one or two weeks past their expiration dates. Boy. I probably shouldn't even be reading all this. I'm trying to get everything that's here in the in the game, trying to get all the jokes and little in jokes and things like that, but it's kind of silly because you can't really use anything here. None of the things in any of these shelves are useful, except for that tube of preparation G that we already took. Uh, these are the lamps. You really use them since the pharmacy closes at sunset. Alright, let's try to use the hand on some of these things. <clears throat> we were going to put in this elaborate animation of you touching the giant finger, like the creation of Adam mural on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel, depicting God touching Adam's finger and all these lightning bol bolts crackling around. But screw it. Yes, you often feel like ripping this iced cream stand down and bringing on the dregs of the leftover toppings, but you have to watch your heroic girlish figure. The symphonium hasn't worked since 1885 when old Manny Rivberg put his fist through it. Old Manny Rivberg, that old Manny Rivberg, he just keeps... That's enough! Don't say it! I'm pretty sure that's a reference to something which I'm not getting. Again, feel free to let me know if you know what that's a reference to. Took a few weeks of bottles arranged just so. Don't blow it now. Leave her where she is. Is a shining beacon to gaze upon to all who gaze upon her serene countenance. Incidentally, have you heard about her scandalous affair? I think you can talk to this picture as well. Yes. Mrs. Cleveland, I just want you to know that your Just Say No to Ether campaign has really inspired me. I'm totally committed to wiping out anesthetic abuse in our lifetime. Yeah, you keep talking photographs and you will be committed. Can I talk to this patron saint of chewable aspirin? No. No. I think her picture is the only thing I can talk to. Can we take our diploma off the wall? But it's hung so well! Hmm, I'm surprised they didn't put in a joke about that. Maybe that was just too obvious. Alright, uh, let's go ahead and you click on this little swingy thing. 
Is there a name for this kind of thing? You know how stores always have this little part of the countertop that flips over so that employees can walk through? I don't know what the name for that is. Is it just like a counter swing? Swinging countertop, something like that? I don't know. Let's go through here. And therewith comes our first customer of the game. Frederick! Frederick's not our first customer. I was quoting her. Why, Miss Prim, you sure are looking pretty today. Now, Frederick, you can call me Penelope if you please. After all, I think we're to that point in our relationship. She must be talking about the hayride you both went on last month, or the square dance you both went to last week, or the cow tipping expedition you both went on last night. Well then, to what do I owe the pleasure of your company this fine morning? This isn't a social call, I'm afraid. I have this rather important prescription Doc Gillespie gave me. I was hoping you'd fill it out as soon as possible. My pleasure, Penelope. And she gave us her prescription, which appears here in our inventory. Penelope's RX, which of course is short for prescription. It says Penelope Prim, 4 milliliters of ty Tylox Polonide orally, 2 times over, uh, I believe that means 2 times daily for a period of 5 days. Why the poor dear? She must be suffering from the vapors, those injurious exhalations produced within the body creating feelings of hypochondria and depression. The prescription is in Doc's usual scrawl and smells of whiskey, so you know it's authentic. Alright. Well, I guess now we have to fulfill Penelope's pr prescription, and for that we need to come back here. Here is our pharmacy. Uh, I'm going to return here in just a little while to actually fill out Penelope's prescription, but first let's go up the stairs here. And this is Frederick, uh, Frederick's bedroom where he sleeps at night. This is your cozy little bedroom. You wonder how it would look with a little paneling. This is... Uh, I, I was going to say, actually, I guess this is from the time when this was usual, but I guess it's still pretty common today for people to live above their shops. People who operate little small shops in the towns often have their homes on the floor above the shop. I guess that's still not too uncommon. Let's take a look around here. This is a small picture of your mother, rest her soul. If only she could have lived to see you now, an ex-gunslinging pharmacist in Coarse Gold, California. She'd have had a heart attack and died. <laughs> Probably a good thing she didn't live to see that then. Don't move it. It's covering up the results of a failed experiment involving Madame Ovary, a dog, a melon, and a Tibetan hanging basket. I don't even want to know what that was about. This is your silly pasture... Oh. Put on Sealy, which is a brand of mattresses. Past Sealy Posturepedic. 100% rawhide filled mattress. You bumped into it at a sidewalk sale and fractured your shin. They let it they let you take it home, which was cheaper than paying to have your leg fixed. Mm-hmm. That continues a theme here. If you look around, you might notice. Well, he stumbles over the moose. Your authentic moose skin rug looks very attractive with those eyeglasses on it. It would have been might le less lumpy if somebody remembered to skin the moose first. Alright. While window shopping in Chowchilla, your eye fell upon this plain but serviceable nightstand. They got your eye back in, but the owner didn't want to touch the nightstand anymore. He let you keep it. Get the joke? Your eye fell on this plain but serviceable nightstand. Apparently that was meant literally. A lovely old glass-fronted bookcase containing some of your favorite leisure time reading material. Thoracic Park by Michael Crouton, obviously from Jurassic Park. A Brief History of Slime by Lugie J. Hawking, obviously a Brief History of Time by Stephen Hawking. Diabetics by Omam Hubbard, that is from Dianetics by L. Ron Hubbard. Nasal Passages by Gail Shewiz, uh, and How to Satisfy a Sheep Every Time and Make It Bath for More, which you keep out of sight behind the other volumes. Yes. You ran across this desk chair outside the general store. In so doing, you tripped and knocked out two teeth. You threatened to sue the owner, but he placated you by giving you this fine chair to keep. You stumbled onto this big old dresser at a moving sale and broke your toe. So rather than pay to have your toe fixed, the owner let you keep the dresser. In fact, you had all, all your furniture by accident. Yeah, I've noticed that. For example, you picked up this old armoire at the farmer's market. It gave you a hernia. <laughs> So instead of paying the doctor's bills, the owner let you keep it. I said there was a theme here, didn't I? Let's take a look inside the armoire. This side of the armoire doesn't open. It must have been built by the same Yahoo that built the outhouse by Reboot Hill. That outhouse with only one side to it. Let's see, can we take some clothes? No, I wanted to look at the clothes. 
The Abmoil door is wide open, displaying your outfits for all the world to see and admire. Uh, can I not, uh... Uh, I thought I... Hmm, wait a minute. Okay, maybe not. Can I open up this, uh, trunk? Oh, hey. Oh, that's what I was thinking of, the clothes are in the trunk. Your old hat and gunslinging outfit. And, hmm, it smells of camphor. Can we take it? You take your old gunslinger clothes and your good guy model Stetson hat. And now we have our clothes in the our inventory. And I don't know why Freddy suddenly is willing to take his clothes since he hasn't used them for several years, but that's okay. We can carry them around with us. Your old gunslinger clothes, including your good guy model hat. The joke being that uh, in classic Western movies, you would identify the good and bad guys by their light-colored and dark-colored hats, respectively. Mr. Farkas' wardrobe by Festus Lauren of Cheyenne. All right. The church key prefers something in a long, flowing black robe. You can't waterproof the cowboy outfit like that. Ah, this is one of few instances where you actually combine two things that uh, they don't have a special message for. With the help of the ice pick, you manage to make some of the buttonholes a little larger. After all, you've put on a little extra weight since your gunslinging days. Yes, you'd fold the clothes nicely and hang them on the rugs of ladder like a tie rack, but it would be wrong. It's not a garment sack, it's just a little brown paper sack, alright. Penelope is prescription, prefer something to a simple frock. The clothes may itch a little bit, but aren't painful or swollen enough to treat them with preparation G. Cramming the clothes into the can would wrinkle them. Later on, that might cause you some credibility problems. You can't fit all that clothes into that glass. Maybe you had a big brandy scent or something. Alright, whatever. Alright, let's, uh, let's see. Can we use the bed? Can't sleep. Your two is make it this broad daylight. There's nothing under there but more moose. Oh, and this drawer opens. Oh, and there's a key inside. It's a key! Hot dog! Now we're getting somewhere. Score! Can we turn the light on? It's a reading lamp, isn't it? So don't bother it while it's reading. Ah, while browsing at a second-hand store, you were struck by this particularly sturdy reading lamp. The result was a mild concussion. The guy who'd accidentally dropped it out of the second-story window was very apologetic, and rather than pay for the skull surgery, offered to let you take the lamp home with you. This is no time to sit and read books. You're in, a, in the middle of a stirring saga of the Old West. It's been so long since you moved this chair, it seems to have become one with the floor. How zen of it. Dresser is just placed as it is, no need to move it. What about the mirror? Oh, it's part of the mirror. Okay. I think this, yeah, this drawer also opens. And inside is a claim check. It's a claim check for a pair of boots. Your old cowboy boots from the before time. Before the accident? Could it be? That's what you get for not opening this drawer for the past decade. You pick up the claim check, your hand trembling with the memory of the last time you wore the boots that you traded for it. That monster, Kenny the Kid, looking down at you and laughing as your ear bled in the hot sun. You put those boots away, never to wear them again, and when you moved to Coarse Gold, you sent them to be cleaned and polished. That was years ago. They've probably been lost or thrown away by now. Hmm. Alright, let's be tidy and clean everything up here. I think we have everything that we can get from here. So, let's go back downstairs and take a look around here. It's a picture of some nearby big rock. That, of course, is the, uh the half dome from which Sierra gets their logo. Don't move it, it's covering up the f remains of a failed experiment in which you attempted to apply a tourniquet to a sucking chest wound. That is a pretty stupid thing to do. Keep a pitcher of water in a basin so you can occasionally wash your face. But you just washed your face last February. <laughs> Old table left over from your college days. Leave it where it is until Freddy Farkas 2. Freddy does some interior decorating. Chairs left here by the previous owner of the pharmacy, Franklin Farquat. Some bugs and ladies' portrait. Notice how the painting seems to follow you around the room. And I don't mean her eyes. Uh... This one is covering up the remains of a failed experiment in which you tried to cure the common cold by building up a resistance to mucus. Yes, that sounds like a bad idea. Can I talk to her? No? I'm surprised he can't talk to the, uh, buxom woman in the portrait. That is a lamp. And a really bodaciously ugly one at that. Is that really ugly? Yeah. It has a unique design. I don't know if I'd call it ugly, but it's... Yeah, it is kind of unique. The lamp doesn't work. 
you make a mental note to change the filament. The last piece of cotton thread used in the bulb only lasts about 45 minutes. Your reference bookshelf complete with such top 10 medical reading as Everything You Always Wanted to Know About Pustules But Were Too Revolted to Ask, Time Life Book of Blackhead Removal, Boil Lansing, and Facial Renovation. Okay, that's pretty gross. The Dermatologist Who Came In From the Cold Sore. The 1882 edition of What Color Is Your Parasite? Obviously a parody of What Color Is Your Parachute. The One Minute Man Mandibula. So that's where that book got to. You've been wondering where your mandibula was. A globe and some souvenirs of your first customers. Like, I guess, that skull up there. Uh, let's see. This is our old roll-top desk. What happened to that roll you recently left on top of it? You must have eaten it. Ah, oh, the desktop is locked. Damn this crude desktop interface. Uh, but we have a key, and I believe that's this key. That, yeah, this is the key to the roll-top desk, so... Not a very difficult puzzle, is it? Use the key on the desk, and there it opens up. Oh, and there's a drawer inside which is also locked. Does it open with the same key? You unlock the desk drawer. So, I don't know why they even bothered to do that. Why did they make the desk lock with this key, then put a drawer in it that you have to unlock with the same key? It's not really... Not really a particularly uh, strenuous puzzle there, but okay. All right, let's go inside the drawer. Oh, it's an old letter, cobwebbed, yellowed, and faded. You take the letter out of the drawer. All right, let's read the letter. Ah, uh, there it is. It's a letter you received some years back from your dearly departed friend, Phil Graves. Isn't that the guy whose tombstone we saw in the cemetery before? Dear Freddy, Thank you so very kindly for your recent gracious hospitality during my recent, recent convalescence. The floor of your workroom proved an extremely comfortable bed, and the stale pharmacy goods you gave me to eat helped star stave off starvation quite adequately. I must admit to being a little curious by your request that I retain your safety deposit key for you. I cannot imagine what you have secured in the bank that creates such strong feelings of both revulsion and endearment. However, I have done as you have asked, and taken the key with me. I swear to you that I will never return this key to you, nor even allow it within your sight, and I further swear to keep it with me wherever I may go. On this you have my word of honor, for I am ever your friend, Philip D. Graves. So, our friend Philip D. Graves has a, uh, an item which we gave to him and which he swore to always keep with him. Could he still have it with him, even in death? Let's see. Don't let the letter alight on the ladder. The letter is written on paper, not on an inflamed tissue. Yes, that is true. All right, let's see. <laughs> they have so little in common. The ink would affect the e efficacy of the elixir. Oh, as if it has any efficacy. Don't pick at your friend's handwriting. Yours isn't so hot either. All right. All right. All right, I think that's enough of that. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. This is our pharmacy laboratory where we concoct and bottle our formulas. Let's go ahead and get started. If we click the hand on this, boom. You study Penelope's pres prescription and prepare to carefully fill it. You wouldn't want to make a mistake with your medicine. Ladies and gentlemen, this is where a lot of the game will transpire. Uh, I shouldn't say a lot, but there will be, we'll be returning here time and time again because this is where we make all of the... Uh, prescriptions and concoctions and things like that which we'll need in the game of which there are a few there aren't a, a whole lot of them there may be like five or six I guess but we'll we'll be seeing some of the screen in the future as well so a quick run through of all the things oh you know what I can't even there's no look icon so I can't even look at these things we can just if you pass your hand over these things it'll give you the names of them so I'm not gonna bother reading all the names but basically yeah most of the names don't mean anything they're just names Sodium bicarbonate is obviously baking soda. Most of the rest of these, okay, water. Medicine bottles, prescription boxes, magnesium sulfate. Graduated cylinder, we'll need this. This is what you use to measure things. So like for example, in our current prescription, um, we need four milliliters of Tylex polonide. Oh, actually, you know what, I don't think, I don't think we go based on that. Yeah, we don't need to measure out four milliliters, but we will need to measure some amount of the uh, of the medicine, and we use the graduated cylinder for that. It's uh, not really clear to me what the difference between that and the test tube is, since the test tube also seems to be a graduated cylinder, but never mind. Mortar and pestle, a five gram measuring spatula, a crucible, matches, that's for lighting this uh, alcohol lamp on fire. 
uh, beaker, medicinal papers, corks for the bottles. Use these corks to cork up those medicine bottles. Stirring rods, glass stirring rods. That is a pill press machine. And here's the alcohol lamp, which I believe is currently, uh, so it feels cool to the touch. I don't think we can light it right now. Yeah, it's empty. You must first fill it with fuel before you can light it. This is a gaseous spectroscope, which is used to examine the... Um, uh, if you burn a gas in front of the spectroscope, it will give you a spectral reading of the uh, spectrum of the burning gas. And here is a balance which you can use to weigh powders and things. But right now what we need is uh, Tylox polonide, which was prescribed by the doctor to, uh, to Penelope. And we need to measure it out here in the graduated cylinder. Oops. This bottle of Tylox polonide is empty. You never seem to have enough. I like that sound effect. Oops. 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 Um, well, darn it. We're out of Tylox polonide, which is what Penelope needs. What are we going to do about that? How are we going to be able to fulfill her prescription if we're out of the medication that she needs? Folks, at this point in time, this would be a good time to pull out. Da 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 da. The Modern Day Book of Health and Hygiene. This is the uh, the manual for the game. And a lot of the, uh, actually pretty much all of the prescriptions and things that we have to fill out constitute a sort of miniature copy protection, which you pretty much need the manual to figure out how to prepare correctly. So let's go ahead and scroll through the manual here. Um, starts off with a nice little introduction, which I'm not gonna read. Uh, you, you folks can read this if you like. It's basically just uh, just reading. Uh, but we want to do the first section of this is about medications, and the second second section is about uh, diseases and conditions. So we're here in the first section about medications. Let's look for Tylox polonide. Here we go. There it is on the right hand side, second from the bottom. An effective aid in the treatment of vapor is not possible to synthesize in the home laboratory. However, substitutions are permissible. See peptoclimacine tetrazole. Peptoclimacine tetrazole. Do we have any of that? Let's see. Peptoclimacine tet. Ah, there we go. Peptoclimacine tetrazole. There it is right there. So we have peptoclimacine tetrazole. What we still need to know is how much of it to use. Let's quickly come back here and. Uh, there it is right there again, right side, second from the bottom. Effective aid in treatment of the vapor is available from blah, 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 blah is an acceptable substitute for Tylox polonide, dispense at 40 milliliters per bottle. All right, let's go ahead and do that. So let's come back here. And so we want 40 milliliters of this stuff. So what we do is take the bottle and click on the graduated cylinder. Okay, now it has five milliliters, 10, uh -huh. we need 40. So here we have 40 milliliters of the stuff. I think that's all we need, actually. I think all we need to do now is take a, um, these are the prescription bottles that we'll actually give to our customers. So we dump this into the bottle. And, uh, you know what? Just so we can see what it does, let me go ahead and throw this away. You have an infinite supply of all these medications here, other than the Tox polonide, obviously. So let's go ahead and do it wrong. Let's go ahead and give Penelope something completely other than what she needs just to show you what happens, because this game, uh, if you make a mistake with the prescription, it doesn't actually kill you or even really penalize you in any way. Basically, the customer just comes back and comes with some story about how uh, how the medication didn't work or something terrible happened. So I put 10, 10 milliliters of this stuff, which is obviously the wrong stuff, into the bottle here, and now I'm going to put a cork on it, and that's it. You carefully label the container, Miss Penelope Prim, for internal use only. And what internals they are, you dream about them day and night. All right, let's go ahead and give her this bottle of the wrong uh, medication and see what uh, see what happens if we try to give it to Penelope now. Thank you, Frederick. This looks perfect. You're a scholar and a gentleman. Shucks, I'm just a poor pharmacist trying to please my favorite customer. Will I see you again soon? I think that can be arranged, Frederick. See you soon. I'll be waiting. So long now, Penelope. A short while later. Hmm. 
I hope I didn't affect my points by doing that, now that I think about it. Frederick! Penelope, it's so good to see you again. I'm afraid this isn't good news, Frederick. This prescription you filled for me? Yes, what about it? Well, one of the children tasted a bit, just a bit, mind you, on the tip of his finger just to see what it tasted like. And? I had to send him home. Chills, fever, bloody stool, the whole thing. I do hate to be a pest, but I'm terrified that this may be incorrectly prepared. Could you take another look at it? For you, anything. So that's all that happens if you get the prescription wrong. And that will happen. You'll get that same me message no matter what. Even if you just take water. Even just put water in the bottle. Somehow that'll give that kid chills and fevers and all that. So, okay, let's do this properly. Let's do it right this time. So we take 40 milliliters of, I think it was this stuff. Pretty sure it was this stuff. Put 40 milliliters into the cylinder. And then we just dump that into a bottle. That's it. Put a cork on it. And we are done. Come back here. And I really hope that I didn't... You know, I'm not sure how the scoring works. You do get points for giving the prescriptions to your customers. But I'm not sure if the game gives you like a reduced score if you give them the wrong medication. Let's see. I have 513 points now. I don't know how many points I'm supposed to get from it from this, though. It says score, which means I know I got it right, but I don't know if I got less points than I was supposed to. All right, she says the same thing as last time. So, I got 10 points. I hope that's how much I was supposed to get. I hope I didn't get less than what I was supposed to get because I got it wrong the first time. Unfortunately, you were so taken with Penelope's angelic presence that you forgot to charge her the 19 cents she owed you. Good day, Freddy! Freddy Farkas! Well, good day to you, Ms. Back. What can I do for you today? Well, Freddy Farkas, Dr. Gillespie, that no good gin-soaked side no lush, wrote me this damn prescription that'll probably cost me an arm and a leg. Here, take this prescription. The rocket from that old wino doctor is making my new ensemble stink to high heaven. All right, and here we have our second prescription. Helen's prescription. It is barely legible due to all the whiskey spots. We eventually decipher it. Helen back. Que Quinotrazate tablets. Uh, I guess three times daily for a period of seven days. All right. Let's come back here and let's quickly read up on Quinotrazate. Oh, there it is. It's at the. Uh, there it is up there. All right. Quinotrazate, a highly efficacious and useful medication when taken orally at a dosage of NTE 60 milligrams a day. Uh, highly efficacious for what? Doesn't even say what it's for. I mean, I guess it doesn't matter since we just we have to fill out the prescription. We don't really need to know what it's for, but I'd like to know why it doesn't tell us what the medication is for. All right, anyway, to, pre uh, to prepare, let's take uh, 15 milliliters of bismuth N. Terasalicylene? Wow. Okay, hold on. Uh, where's the bismuth? And okay, this is the bismuth and terasalicylene. So we need 15 milliliters of that. There we go. 15 milliliters of that. And what is next? To that we add 30 grams of phenidol oxytriglycloride. Okay, 30 grams of phenidol oxytriglycloride. Uh, okay, that's this stuff here. So we need 30 grams of this. And because this is a powder, not a liquid, we measure it with the balance here. So there we go, 30 grams. Okay, we can put that back. All right, so we have the 15 milliliters on the left and the 30 grams on the right. Um... Mix together in a glass beaker and stir the mixture well using only a pure glass rod, then process into pill form. Okay, so we put it in a beaker, stir it with a rod, and then process it into pill form. Our beaker is here, so we'll dump this into the beaker, and this also into the beaker, leaving us with 45 milliliters of a solution. Let's go ahead and stir it with a glass rod. Okay, we can throw the rod away. You toss it into the waste receptacle. And now we just need to process it into pill form using the pill machine here. So put that in there. 
and the pill machine now has the 45 milliliters of stuff in it. And I guess all we do is just, do we just click on this? I like that music, that's cool. Uh, and do we put it into these same bottles? Yes, we do. All right, can I just do this? So you can either click the hand icon on this, and then it produces some pills, and then you can click the pill bottle on that. It looks like it produces three pills at a time. Or you can just click the pill bottle directly on this. And it just keeps doing that. Alright, that's it. The pill machine is empty. And we have 21 pills here, which I think was the... Uh, if we come back here and check quickly... Yeah, at the bottom of the Queen Trays 8 part it says, Usual dose of just 21 pills. So it sounds promising. It sounds like we got it right. Let's go ahead and put a cork on the bottle. Mrs. Helen back. Take three times daily just before meals. I guess that's it. Uh, that should should be correct. Let's come here and see if we uh, if we got it right. Oh, let me check my score. So this time I got it right on the first try. So I have 523 points. Hold on. You know what? I'm curious now. Let me just save here real quick. Um, I'll just save it as about to give Helen her RX. All right, let's give her her prescription. That's better, Freddy Fargus. That'll be 22 cents, Miss Back. Put it on my tab. I don't have it with me right now. And she leaves. Okay, it looks like you got another 10 points, so it looks like 10 points is what you get for filling out the prescription correctly, regardless of whether it's the first time or not, so that's, that's fine. Oh. Freddy, honey, just slide that handsome pharmacist butt on over here. I got something I need from you. This is, uh, morning, Sadie. What have you got? This is Sadie Ovary, the madame at the brothel. I got a prescription here I need filled. Something that'll increase my womanly powers, if you know what I mean. Be a dear and fill it for me right away, won't you? I simply can't wait to try it out. Uh, if... Is this to increase your womanly powers? Is that like... Your wish is my command, madame. You take the prescription from the madame. What a busy morning. You haven't had to fill this many prescriptions since Custer's troops stayed at the Dirty Sheets Hotel. Um, she needs a prescription that will increase her womanly powers. Is she going through a sex change operation or something? Uh, what? This prescription is impossible to read. That's what happens when Doc writes a prescription through his bleary, whiskey-soaked eyeballs. Well, how are we supposed to fill out a prescri prescription that's impossible to read? All right. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and save here. I think that's enough for now. Uh, got Sadie's RX. Okay, well, we're going to have to figure out how to read this prescription in the next video. But for now, I'm curious. What happens if we come back here and instead of giving Helen, Mom, the right prescription, we give her something wrong? Let's go ahead and give her... Oops. Again, let's give her... Wait, what does this say? Oh, this is, it just says, this is where you concoct all your stuff. It's here that you truly earn the right to color stuff. 40 focus, your focus. Okay. Let's go ahead and just give her the wrong thing. Because I'm curious what she says if we give her the wrong medication. Do I have two prescriptions in my inventory now? No. I guess we got rid of the old one. All right, let's give her the wrong thing and see what, it, uh, what, it, what she says. Well, right now she says the same stuff, but she's going to come back in just a moment short while later. Mr. Farkas! Yes, Helen? I accidentally gave a bit of the so-called medicine to one of my pets! And it died! Oh. I don't... I didn't catch what she said, but basically she was complaining about something. I'm so sorry, Miss Back. I'll take another stab at it, and I'll remove the charge from your tab until I get it right. Huh! Well, can I give it to her again? Ha! Ah, 
You were just informed that your prescription filling work with shoddy. You're not going to hand them the same bad prescription back, are you? No, you're not. Actually, that is what I was trying to do, but... Uh, okay. Well... I guess it won't let me. Alright, I'm sorry I clicked through that one message, but, uh... I think it was just her complaining about her pet dying, so... Let's go ahead and leave it at that. I can't believe I've already been playing for 50 minutes. Wow, that's crazy. Time really flies when you're having fun. Okay, I'll go ahead and stop here, and we'll continue in the next video. Like I said, next video we'll see what we can do about Sadie Ovary's prescription that we can't read, and we might have some further adventures as Freddy Farkas, Frontier Pharmacist. I hope that you'll join me for those future adventure folks. Until then, thanks for watching, and I will see you folks later.